Uh, hi, folks. I'm just going to do a short introduction, and then we're going to attempt something which is probably impossible to have a natural conversation sitting on a stage with an audience. Um, since we didn't have an opening for this exhibition, uh, given the current situation, uh, there are just a few people I want to thank before I start. So I'd seriously like to thank the model who have supported this project from the beginning. It's been a couple of years in the making and postponed on numerous occasions and evolved and changed through that. So uh, thanks for sticking with it. It's not a big show, it's a little intimate project that we've worked on. So, but it's an important show certainly for me and I hope for Pat. Um, in that I want to thank uh, Ema, McGarry who can't be here today, Mary Louise who just spoke, and Daniel uh, McDonald who put up with me uh, managing the whole project for the whole time and did very well. And uh, Rob Dunn who's been a great help. And then also just want to thank my other half, Noreen Cassidy, who sort of gave up Sundays too for uh, this to all work and uh, has been a great support on this and many other things. So, um, don't quite know how this is going to go. Uh, we're not great planners of speaking. We just want to see what comes naturally in it. Uh, as Mary Louise said, at the beginning of lockdown, uh, I, f I began to formalise my visits to Pat, and that was in part just through the strange time we've all been living through, in that the system of shopping Pat had at that time wasn't working, and uh, I just decided, in, in, this, in a kind of friendship way, I would look after the shopping and bring it to him once a week, check that everything was okay. So. That's how the kind of, I would have regularly visited once a week, once a week or once every two weeks or maybe sometimes longer uh, prior to that. But it got formalized into a, a regular visit, bringing the shopping. And then as time evolved through lockdown, uh, you realize the world, the sky hadn't fallen out on our heads and we were still alive and we're still painting and we're still trying to live and began to think about ways to get back to work in, in, and, 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 and live through and continue what we normally do, which is just paint. So uh, in the first number of months in that fabulous weather of the first lockdown, we were outside, as I remember it, most of the time, sitting in Pat's garden. Uh, I would draw Pat, Pat would talk, we'd have lunch, and it kind of evolved through that. And as time progressed, and this show became more concrete, um, we wanted to find a way to get into the studio again, in, in Pat's studio. Uh, so we dis didn't really decide, we just migrated slowly from the outside as the weather changed and as confidence dealing with COVID changed and moved into the studio for Sundays for a period of the day. And with no particular plan other to, than to see what can happen. The show is called Beginnings and uh, I think, I'm gonna try and bring Pat slowly into this. I've always had a huge admiration for Pat's work and I would honestly say back when I first came across it in the 80s in Dublin, I didn't understand it, his work at all. It has an awkwardness that maybe if you haven't kind of connected with it, you don't know really what it is. But there's something, a tone or an undercurrent in it that always speaks so truly of art, not of picture making, not of images or about anything, but he has a way of connecting through into the undercurrent that is art and that goes through history. It doesn't matter if you're looking at Rembrandt, doesn't matter if you're looking at, you know, back uh, frescoes from the medieval years, you find something that is alive and real in it. And he has a way of finding that. So 
One of the most surprising things I found, Pat, over the nearly two years now of spending Sundays together in that particular way is that I don't, you, you have a, a way of approaching work which is so completely different to my own, but that you don't seem to try to make work. Work seems to come from somewhere. I don't know what you think about that. Um, just uh, don't get upset by Pat, it's, it's grand. He, he has a neurological thing that sometimes he has, a, uh, it, it, any, any talking brings on, can bring on a bit of tearfulness, but it's not upsetness. So just, uh, we laugh all the time in the studio with it. But it's, anyway. I think uh, he is, uh, uh, it's, um, it's a thing of uh, relating with what your body what it does, really. it's not what you have, uh, have in your head, because after um, I've been working since the mid-1950s, or at least about 1960, so it's not necessary to think of things. I think, um, you know, thinking is something that gets in the way of work. I see. And do you? Um, you can, as a, like when you're when you're doing something, you you're not thinking of what you're doing. It's only afterwards when you have done it, or you're halfway through doing it, that um, you begin to use your some kind of critical or analytical uh, faculty you might have. But at the beginning, you're just like a baby uh, who, who is trying to make sense of his immediate, immediate uh, surroundings and the sensations of being a being, simply. And it's that sensation that the work comes from. It's a, it's a, so it's not. It's not necessarily an, an idea. So ideas, as I say, may come into the process as a secondary stage. And uh, meanwhile, it's kind of your your hand is you 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 doing nothing. You you're in a vacuum, and. You, it's you, my intention, in a way, is to keep that vacuum going as, as that sort of sense of emptiness. And from, from emptiness, something uh, new comes. I think what, what I've noticed, most of all, like we have, we're very different as painters. I'm a looker and a, a taker of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing you while you're painting. Yeah. And you're, you're, you, you occupy a kind of a world and a bubble that uh, you've very graciously let me kind of connect with and sit and watch and be with. Yeah. And in that, it's not a kind of, you could easily think it's an affectation this talk of nothingness being the source of making work. Yeah. But in observing it, that's what I see happening. And I don't see you, you questing to finish anything. Um, I, I, yeah. Can you tell us anything about finishing a painting? Because all I did for this show was remove paintings, not uh, yeah. ask you uh, whether... Uh, uh, well, you, I really uh, don't like to finish anything. <laughs> I, 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 I think because to finish something means to kill it, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm very conscious of the way people kill things, and uh, you <laughs> um, 
One of the you very easily um, sort of uh, uh, but you know, it's like uh, it's like making a judgment when you, when you judge someone or a situation, you stop thinking. There's no well. Once you make a judgment, it's like building a wall, and everything is on the other side of the wall. You, you, so you, you suspend you, you to keep the um, the breathing going. It's like breathing, in fact. You don't think of where are you going to get the next best farm to keep you from falling into the grave. You just breathe. That's what is breathing. And uh, one of the uh. one of my kind of senses of the whole time has been that the most interesting time we spend together is, is usually not when we're talking. If, in fact, the conversation is kind of, you know, it is what it is. It's fine for company, but when we're both lost in our activity, the, that's the most, you become most aware of how, how valuable uh, the creative kind of process together is. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it is difficult to talk about these things because we've been living, like all of you, in a bubble of our own for the last couple you, of years. You but know, you, in, 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 in the course of, of going through your day, you, you, every time you, you're, you're with someone, you're conscious of... Uh, the compulsion to fill the silence, you know, even if it's filling it with total nonsense. Very, very few people uh, can abide silence or, or abide being alone, uh, you know, so. One of the real uh uh, le learning things for me over the time is something to do with the, re the notion of real freedom and that awesome. freedom freedom yeah, yeah. that the in I, I've always found and this isn't just the last couple of years in our in our friendship what I've one of the things I've really valued mm. as an artist as an artist friend is that nothing is off the table with you in conversation or in yeah. discussion. Yeah. The world is the good, the bad is equaled by the good and they're balanced in you, nothing, you can talk about anything. Well, and well, the same it, happens in painting with you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, it's for freedom, it's like, uh, you know, you, you avoid making, as I say, making a judgment or, or because if you, if you, have a project in mind. You're projecting yourself out of the present. You, you're, you're, you're going into the illusory space where, where it is not real. So to, to the, the actualization of being present is the, is the Actualization of painting. It's, it's, it, you pay. Painting is like breathing. If you if you want to continue living, you breathe. That's all you have to do. Yeah, you know, and it's the same with painting. And there's no no uh, deep is being present. So you're like a, you, as I say, you're like a child. You, 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 you have no design, you have no project to complete, you have no title to, you're not making a painting of something because the painting, really the painting is, is working on its own. It's like, a, you know, you, uh, you, you, someone said, I think W.H. Orton said, 
we, we, we don't live our lives. Life lives us. And, and in that, as you know, we live in a culture which on the whole celebrates youth, uh, mm. fast action results and the chasing of things. Mm. So my experience of you and your work is almost entirely the opposite of that. And that as an artist coming to you and meeting you opens a door of freedom for me in a sense, because mm -hmm. the, oh. but you, in, in your world where I meet you, you, there is no striving in terms of I career think, and, and age I affects think, everything yeah. too. I think also as you, as you grow older, freedom comes to get you. <laughs> you, 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 you don't get it or you don't uh, uh, create freedom, but freedom is something that you, you, you are sucked into, is, is waiting for you. It's what, you know, we're all going to die one day, so that is, this is freedom. You know, we're, we're, we're actually free, and which, of course, terrifies us because we're terrified of freedom. Anyway, not just death, but freedom. We're terrified of, of uh, death. <laughs> um. So, so, so as uh, is uh, you know, life is a uh, painting. Isn't there's is a choice in painting. The painting tells you what to do. You know, we we think we live our lives we according to our own ambitions and design, but in fact we live very little of our lives. Our lives as they live us. And uh, and the more that happens, the, the more free you are, you know, when you, when you begin to acknowledge that you're simply, you're not in charge, you're not in control. And, uh, and that, that is the beginning, it, that realization is the beginning of freedom in, in a way. Okay. You, know, you, you're, you acknowledge your place in the physical world, which is uh, a, a kind of a, a humbling and a, 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 a wonderful experience. Because it's, a, it's a delightful experience to realize that you're not in charge of your life and you're not much less in control you know, you, you or the, your, 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 because you, you see yourself as, and the work as part of, not separate from what's around you, but as part of the whole. And, uh, Can I ask you, uh, I mean, I, in, in watching you work and looking at, paintings that emerge, the work that emerges, in terms of subject matter, like I've, I must say I've probably looked at your painting, the big blue one in the exhibition, Two Stones, longer than I've looked at any other painting on the planet. I've sat in front of it for the full stretch of this pandemic and I've been looking at it. So I've been looking at two stones mm. on, a, no, yes, on a canvas. Yes, yes. And even that, you, if you were physically more able, you would have changed and kept working on. You don't see it as finished, I know. But what, in terms of subject matter, stones are quite a, or they appear to be a strong thing in your well, work. St st stones, uh, I, 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 I don't know when stones are, they are a very memorable part in in in, uh, in, in stories of of 
the world of you know kind of uh, stress, you know, kind of, yeah, I always think a great inspiration for me is when I think of the man or the woman, whoever it was, but the human being, the person who drew uh, an animal on the wall of a cave that we did, you have done in the south of France and in space, you can see. Case of Desco, yeah. you know. So it, it's it's just kind of a, a loneliness of the person with a piece of chalk or whatever or a knife making a person in the clay, making an animal, and it's just um, uh, it's in that way that we, that we enter a sort of eternal uh, um, spin of, 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 of existence, the spin of the world, the spin of being, spin of existing. It, it's just, it just comes from that encounter with uh, emptiness. Because the man who did that, did that in the cave must be, must have experienced emptiness in a way, which is a, which is the beginning of what's called creativity. You know, is you, but that is to say, there's something which is very difficult in our day and age to, to encounter emptiness. We, we have to be deliberately aware of its existence. And before you acknowledge it, and your acknowledgement of that emptiness is is the most important. And uh, thing in your life, I, in my own head, which I would never do normally with paintings, I and promote. Morph, anthropomorphized the two rocks yeah. because it did feel like you were one rock over there and I was one one rock over here painting mm. Mm. and we in a way as we try and connect beyond each other as human beings mm. we yeah. are we are a mystery people are a mystery and they remain a mystery even often to ourselves, all the way to the end. Mm. And yeah. uh, you try and connect, and you make connections with people, but those two rocks, those two stones, for me, sort of symbolize, not in a bad way, mm. the separateness and the silence of two individuals who you, you know each other, but you can never fully know mm. another, in a way. But the, the, the thing of mystery, of course, is very important. Yeah. Because um, um, if, if, if there were no mystery, I think we, we, uh, we have no imagination. You know, it's, it's, if, if, we, if, if, our, if our entire way of knowing was, uh, was what dominated our lives, which is really Knowledge is a, is a, is sort of a false kind of a, a ambition or false instinct to have. So knowledge is, is very deceptive because knowledge depends on not knowing. I mean, you know, the, the old mystics. Uh, in the Middle Ages, talked about not knowing the idea of of God or the idea of uh, is is what is unknowable, and uh, it's a it's a it's a it's just unknowable thing which gives depth to every everything gives meaning to life. It's not what we know, it's what we don't know. That's what's important. Mm. And, and that's why, that's why I suppose when I'm painting, 
is that not not knowing is what energizes me or what gives me a device in being alive and painting and drawing, which is a delightful thing because you're not, you don't know where you're going. I remember where I was, I was with my brother and we were driving down through Roscommon and he said, where are we going? I said, I don't know, we're just following the wheels. That's a good guy. He laughs. And, but it's that. It's kind of. Uh, I suppose as well, it's like when I was a child, when I was very small, we didn't have light in or of the house. So we had candles. And the room was always full of shadow. And and you and you and when you when you're surrounded by shadow and darkness, your imagination becomes more ac active. You know, because, because you people the darkness, and, uh, and with, uh, so kind of uh, I, 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 I do like it's dark. This is. Uh, it, it, it highlights the importance of the sun in a curious way. You know, but if there weren't in darkness, there wouldn't be any need for sun or for light. But darkness goes together with light. It's, 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 so it, 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 they're inseparable. Does seem as life and death and night and day, winter and summer. Yeah. So it's it's so sort of um, imponderable and mysterious things. Things, things we, we use working with things that are not answers in themselves, but things that are, and uh, sort of. Uh, Meditating or contemplating on the on the mystery of being, and not looking for answers, we're, we're compulsively looking for answers. But the important thing is the question, not the answer. And if we go on questioning, uh, and those are the things that that's. Vitalize, if that's the correct word, my painting and my life is the. Uh, that's the that's doctors. So, yeah, it says it's, it's, it's kind of making a roadway through doctors in a way. It's not vanquishing or beating. Conquering darkness, you're integrating darkness, and uh, that becomes part of your life in a way. And how do you feel when you put those sort of things on show? Like here, we've done a show. Does it? I mean, when I see your work, you, when when I see you working, I almost see. I, I sort of felt almost bad taking the work to exhibit it. It just seemed to exist in its own, it seemed to make the most sense where it was being made. So here we've taken it out, put it in frames on walls and we give them titles. I suppose that's the job. There is a, there's always a balance in everything between the fact that as a career you've been an artist, but that isn't what the making as, is as about also, yeah. as a career you've been an artist as a as your uh, there's a balance between the job you've been doing to survive as a human being on the planet as an artist mm. and then what happens in the making of the work I, I, I don't think I ever uh, chose a career in well, painting probably the wrong way to phrase uh, it a, so I think it's just in, it's in so uh, but, uh, but I suppose it did, as I say, 
choose me, brother, and I choosing it. And do you think that's something to do with the fact that visual things, visual painting, is, isn't verbal? You know, that it allows you to be in the soup <laughs> of, of yeah. being in a different way to having to nail it in words. Yeah, well, I think uh, you, you, you don't... What was, uh, you know, you could, uh, for, I, I mean, I suppose I have uh, but just uh, my way of existing is I work, I work with uh, visual things, things uh, light and dark and what you, but words, uh, words nevertheless do play a role in what I, uh, because we're, we're obviously, obviously, I'm a human being like any other, and uh, uh, we are, we become, we're very verbal. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, I suppose, that's what, that's what makes us different from other forms of life, other animals and birds and so on. Where we, we have this capacity to, for, to invest me in words. And uh, so, so, so we write poetry. On, you know, we we have we can speak meaningfully or meaninglessly. And uh, so. I have a feeling that I would prefer to see if somebody else has something they want to ask at this stage. Uh, uh, yes. I don't know if that's appropriate or I don't know how long we've been at this. It, it's a difficult, it's a really difficult thing to have a conversation on a stage, I have to tell you. It's a natural conversation. But uh, an input of a question from somebody else can spark another level of conversation. So if you have anything, feel free to stick your hand up and Mary Louise will go around with the microphone. If you don't, I'll keep going and try my best to keep my keep the mojo moving. Um, I don't even know if you can hear us. We could have just been talking away quietly here to ourselves and, you, and you've been nervously sitting there quite happy to... But, uh, yeah, Ronnie has a question here. Oh, well, we've got somebody at the back. Ronnie, I'll get you in a minute. Hi. Oh, Hi. Can you... Hi. Um, I'm curious um, to hear your words of wisdom of a lifetime of uh, experience. And I'm curious to know that when you started out as a painter, if those insights of working from that space of emptiness and being in the present, if you were aware of that back then, or if that is something that grew with the years, um, that you became aware of yourself, or was that very clear to you from the start? So the question is, that sense of emptiness and, as a, as, and, and the internal stuff that makes you paint now, yeah. when did you find that? Was it early? Did you have that early on? I mean, um, to me, you did were looking in a nascent way. I think really, you know, when, when I was growing up, I, I wanted to be, make, to be as comfortable as I could. And my only way of, be, of finding uh, being really comfortable was in, in painting, because I was, I didn't, uh, uh, it's, it's, I painted in order to make a, a, a comfort zone for myself to live in. So it was, so, you know, I didn't, I wasn't interested in going through a, a castle of, 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 of potential careers like in medicine or law or, or uh, any other kind of work or a normal way of earning a living. That never occurred to me until too late. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I 
the, <laughs> and then some, some say, you know, as someone said, time is but a moment. One one moment you're you're you whizzing through life at a great rate and you're doing all sorts of things, and next moment you 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 know it's all over, and then you just kind of quietly waiting for the end. <laughs> And which is the moment of freedom, of course. <laughs> but it's, uh, <laughs> so it's, uh, uh. From my, if I if I can take a liberty and answer well, in terms is, of what is the question? The, the, yeah, a, the question was: Can you remember back to, to like, was the always emptiness a source for you when you were young? Did you have that kind of? Uh, um, spiritual or mental or uh, not yet the wrong word did you have that under knowledge or understanding as that as a source for art back in spain in the 70s or yeah, dublin is, in the 80s yeah yeah uh, i i think if, uh, I, I i i i needed to make as uh, say a, a space for myself to to exist in and a comfortable space <laughs> And uh, I, it, I, that's why I painted, you know, because, because otherwise, I didn't find any, or I didn't find much meaning in most activities. Or to, uh, I had, I, I didn't, I only have a, a good relationship with myself when I paint, and uh, painting really is, a, is. A, is a way of relating, it's a way of connection. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a kind of, uh, and uh, uh, okay, it, it creates, yeah, it creates space for me. Otherwise, I don't find, in what was being given to me, I didn't find space to live, so I had to find, make a space of my own. When, uh, 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 uh. So in answer, I think, yes, back then it was there, but like all of us, we live and grow and change and evolve, so it's changed and grown uh, over the decades of painting. As you know, you learn. I mean, I see in your early work, definitely, A, a per, your personality of approaching the world, of relating to painting mm. from a very early point. And, it, and it's just grown and changed and been through life, the, the tumble dryer of life, you know, ever yeah. since in different mm. ways. Yeah. What I like about the now thing is how you respond to your existence mm. in the difficulty, you know, the very human difficulty of just managing being alive when you're 86 and it's tough. Uh, yeah. and how you process that into painting and just let it be and, and it, relate. That's it's, it's very difficult to, to, to see what painting is in words because words are one thing, paint is another. And uh, it's to, to translate painting into words is uh, uh, almost, almost it's really impossible. Yeah. And uh, it can, and you know it's a kind of it's, it's something uh, that you, you you relate with. I think when we were very, when all of us were very 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 small, we related with the world in a very creative way, and but that was that's as we began to be accepted into society, uh, into starting with the family, uh, that was sort of knocked out of us in a way. We, we, uh, we were sort of, you know, we, 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 were, uh, we were taught manners and we, 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 how to behave when other people are present and so on. So, you know, so painting so, is misbehaving. So, <laughs> you know. so painting is a way of, 
of truly behaving. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, can I maybe take another question because it's livened up my sense of a yeah. conversation? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to ask uh, Patrick, you, you've been working obviously very long time now, very long career, and this is maybe slightly related to the last question, uh, but when I thought of it, I haven't heard the last question. <laughs> uh, but certainly over the past uh, 35 years or so that I've been familiar with the work public, it's been very consistent, work, you know, you've been working in a particular way, and I'm just wondering, over the duration of your career, and certainly over the past 35 to 40 years, do you feel it's changed what you're doing, or do you feel it's always the same thing? So, uh, do, do you feel over the last 30, 40 years that your way of approaching painting has changed, or may, the way you work has changed? I mean, you, you often talked earlier about uh, wanting to sort of simplify things and, and take some of the weight out of things. So something has changed, things have changed. Yeah, well, well I, you know, uh, as you change as a human being, as you, as you, as you grow older and so on, you, you were seeing things. So everything changes. Like I, I, I could never have imagined that I was going to be the sort of person I am now. That was beyond even my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so then, you, you know, you, you're responding to circumstances as well. You, you know, you can, it took me quite a while to. Uh, to, to feel at home with, uh, in, as a member of the human race. <laughs> and I, I, that's, and uh, that's just, I suppose that was a big thing in my life, with a bit, so seeking that kind of space for myself um, as a human being in relation with other human beings. You know, and, and uh, you know, you, 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 what, what you come up with in to allow yourself to, con to continue is different every day. You know, it's it's uh, there's no overall pattern pattern that is a formula for life. You know, kind of. Every day is different. Every moment is different, and, uh, and uh, you're, you're as, as an emotional person, as a thinking person, your your world is changing. You know, all, all the time, and uh, and uh, and just gives life its wonderful unpredictability, you know, and, and which is very important, that, that uh, you know, that it, it gives you, it, you know, it gives you this sense of wonder, and everything is wonderful, and everything, life is full of surprises, you know. Okay, and it's important uh, to be to have the cap capacity to be surprised by your your own existence, by everything, and by your work, by what you're doing when you're in the studio. Yeah, yeah. So, and the, one way of doing that is because. Uh, it's like that recent work that I was doing with Nick was, uh, was because it uh, was a complete surprise to me. You know, but it, a lot of my work still surprises me when I look at it. 
desires to do that, and some, and sometimes, sometimes you say, well, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you're surprised. I, and he's, this and, is absolutely true. I literally see him being surprised by what he's done uh, in a, like, he picks them up and looks at the place. <laughs> Where did they come from? Uh, they are, uh, it is, the surprise is real. In it, it's like, a, I mean, we all like to be, as painters, you like to be surprised by what you do because then you feel like you might be doing something different rather than just repeating some old pattern in yourself. So, so surprise is important. And being open. That's the openness is the other thing that really strikes me in your work. It is open to to change, to growing, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, to, it's, 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 it's having the strength to 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 maintain the emptiness yes. of life. And to actually see that as a necessary path to transformation. Uh, this be, if, if, if our life is full, we don't need to do any more. If you know, if we, but, uh, when it's empty, you're, you're, you're on your toes all the time. When you, it's empty and you don't know what's around the corner and how to maintain the trick in being an artist I think is how to maintain the strength to keep that throughout. Yeah, I'm really conscious when I'm with you or having, I mean it's not really just to do with these last couple of years or this body of work but that main, maintaining you just described it there, the strength to continue with a project which to the rest of the world is almost non-existent. The little drawings upstairs, the working drawings, they're not big statements of uh, machismo in the art world, but to me they are uh, tokens or talismans of freedom. They, they, you know, and maybe my, as I keep saying he's just, as usual, ahead of the posse. The world is going to have to change. How we relate to ourselves is going to have to change. How the art world relates to itself, it's going to, everything's going to have to change in the next period of time. So I just think Pat's ahead of the posse and he's dealing with reality in a small, contained way that we will all have to deal with in some ways. So um, anybody got another question or are we wearing you out? Sorry, who's... Oh, there you are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was here. Patrick, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about your relationship to the materials of painting and drawing. Oh, yeah. So, that's a good question uh, from a poet. Um, can you speak a little bit about your relationship to materials, the materials of painting? It's just, except it's again, it's like being, being a, a baby, it's being a child who works, who is sitting in the backyard and working with the clay. It's, 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 just, it's a pleasure you get from working with materials. It's to feel and to see things. It's really, it's, it gives you. If, if working with the materials of painting, like painting itself, which is a lot of it is earth colour and so on, these things are, are if, if that gives you pleasure, it, I, I can't emphasise too strongly the importance of pleasure and the pleasure you get from physical contact with paint. If that thrills you to the bone, then pay, continue painting. Mm. Yes, I'm just looking at some water here. Yeah. I forgot about you. No, it's okay. That's there if you want it. I'll put it nearby. 
So that's the relationship with with the painting, just the same as uh, you know, yeah, everything is. Uh, I find it. Can I can I interrupt you a second yeah. on the subject of materials? I find it quite um, uh, entertaining. I'd be far more. Uh, I buy in bulk, I buy lots of paint, I do I buy good paper, I do all, all kinds of things. And I, I sometimes bring to pass things I'm not particularly using at the moment. Uh, so a, a bunch of watercolours, which a brand which I bought and wasn't using, I bring them to him, or the leftovers of something. And I'm always amazed how he doesn't use, he only uses what he finds, not... He's not attracted to a big box of new paints. Uh, no interest whatsoever in getting more stuff. Happy, I think, when I bring some paper mm. and it works. But there's no questing for it. There's no, uh, s there's no acquisitional uh, thing at all. It's kind of quite extraordinary, really. I'd be almost the opposite. I'd be acquiring at a rate of phenomenal out of controlness on Amazon. Uh, I don't know, that wasn't really a question, Pat, it was an observation. <laughs> like I, I, uh, well, actually, the whole, the whole series of portraits I've recently done of Pat in the studio started by me bringing him a big box of Sennelier oil pastels which cost like a couple of hundred euro or something. And I, I, I always hated oil pastels or pastels and I brought them to Pat because I knew he occasionally used them. And this was a box with every colour under the sun, as big as the biggest box you could buy anywhere. I got it. And I brought it in. So I wasn't going to use it as I tried them. Ugh, yuck. Left them at Pat's. Uh, he never touched them. He just looked at the box, ignored it. And then eventually, I started using them while I was there. And I, as I began to get deeper into the portraits, I just picked them up and started, I sort of, uh, by osmosis, developed some of his just pick it up mentality and started using them. And now I'm addicted to them and in, a, in, a, in a very nice way. So in relation to materials, as far as I can see, uh, it's just a very, it is, as he described, like a child picking up something. And I see uh, I, he, he can paint with both hands. One hand, right hand, left hand, or both hands together. And unconsciously, or unintent, like, it's not, I don't see him trying to do that. You just, uh, so it's interesting to me, you said earlier when we were in the green room, what leads first? The idea of doing something, or is it the brush that is leading? Now, when I'm watching, I sort of wonder, is it just the brush leading a lot of the time, in a good way? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's good. Uh, ideas are not a good thing, uh, because of the, when it comes to painting. It, 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 you know, it, 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 you know the old phrase, he has ideas about himself. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the fewer ideas you have, the better. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, yes, it, 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 you know, or the less ambition you have. If, if you start out painting with an ambition to, to do something, you already have lost the painting. And the painting is dead. It, it, uh, so, the painting really. The action of painting leads you on. You're not directing the paint like a, like traffic along a street. You put the, the paint leads you on, and you just you just become a act. You become action. The the you you're just act, acting. Performing, for, you're just doing something. You know, to, you have no purpose in doing it. Like painting has no purpose whatsoever. We can't use it. 
He doesn't pay the rent. <laughs> here, <laughs> not here. And so, he was just doing it for no reason at all, other than pleasure. It is an obscure lifestyle and activity to most people. I mean, that you would spend a whole life in that arena to it, no apparent gain or end. Is, it's, it's only obscure to non-painter, to other people. It's yeah. also, it's not obscure to the painter. No, no. It. It's, normal. it's normal for painters. Has anybody got another question? Or not? Yeah, we've got somebody, I think. Hello, uh, Nick. Oh. Uh, it's Joe. Uh, hi. Oh, hi, Joe. Congratulations on the show. But you, you're very dismissive towards the notion of ideas and concepts. But when I look at your painting, they're, they're very rigorous and intellectual in many ways, despite your intuitive way in which you approach them. I think that there's a very interesting dichotomy there. Uh, and you, you stick with very strong motifs throughout your um, career, for want of better terms, and etc. Um, so I want to speak about this kind of incongruent uh, nature of this very liberated, very intriguing um, relationship you have to uh, when you're confronted with a blank page and you work with this uh, spontaneity. Um, which, I, which to me is incredibly liberating and an incredibly uh, interesting approach. Um, and you talk about having ideas that almost suffocate things. But there is this underlying conceptual rigor to your work, which, is, which I found very intriguing. Is there anything you wish to say or not say on that? Okay, that's a tricky one, Pat. <laughs> Joe's asked us a tricky one. <laughs> um, so we, we're talking about the, you, you've talked about kind of the intuitive way through nothingness that you find painting, and that's all true. But Joe, it's Joe Walker up there, by the way, is saying in, in, in your work over the years, he also sees a rigor, an intellect, oh, what? a rigor. An intellectual rigor. Uh, yeah. uh, um, I'm not sure he's convinced, Joe. <laughs> to me, if I can attempt, to, can I? I'm going to say it anyway, since I'm allowed to be here. Uh, I see the rigor is in facing nothingness. That, but that in a way, that's not an intellectual pursuit. I don't. Uh, to uh, face. Uh, in, in staying with over a lifetime the attempt to f face and use nothingness or your meet your relation with nothingness to make work it, it wasn't it's not an intellectual thing it's a survival thing for you from my outside view of you it's not but, but what's it what's uh, I know it's I don't know if I'm gonna get this one across yeah. um, uh. Joe's say, Joe is saying, when he looks at your work, he sees, which I do too, an absolute rigor oh, yeah. and, yeah. and strength. But yeah. I'm saying that strength, although there is an int you are intellectual, you read way more than I would ever read. You have a great uh, intellectual grasp of things. But your work, to me, comes from a way you, stay, you stick to the line that you've stuck to. Of yeah, I, didn't, I don't have any choice really. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So is that Joe an intellectual thing or not? If you've no choice, it's not really intellectual. Yeah, it's yeah. I suppose what I see is that you know, there's very strong motifs throughout throughout his career. Um, and I think that do you mean the this like in terms of imagery? In terms of imagery, yeah, and in his absolute approach and. I just think maybe, uh, I, and I'm very intrigued with this pro approach of absolute liberation and ideas are suffocating and that's incredibly liberating to hear and, uh, and I can see that in the work too, so, but there's also I think, you know, a very strong 
conceptual uh, and rigorous relation to her in his work that has been that I encountered, I believe. Well, I think it's a bit like in in everything. It's a bit like he's talking shadow. Shadows also have the opposite light. So, it's if you've lived in the world, you have some. There is there are ideas. He's not going to. One doesn't have ideas, but I. They don't. It is different. Uh, I mean, it's a quali It's quali To me, it's qualitatively different. Uh, no, I hear what you're saying, and kind of hear what Pat's saying. It's just just something I just put forward, put out there. You know? But I think what you're seeing in the. I mean, we can. I, I will ask Pat in a minute uh, about the actual imagery. I mean, you you have used. Uh, Thing, kind of religious images, images of angels, people, skulls. You have you have an iconography over the years that just flows into the work. Uh -huh. uh, and wonder where that comes from. What, like, if you're drawing a skull, what does it mean to you? If I drawing what? A skull, or a whole sea of skulls, or. A... Uh, I'm not quite sure. I th I think um, you know. I, why do you draw skulls? Why do you draw I suppose we, the what in Spanish is called the pompas funebres has a fascination for me. <laughs> Yeah, the funeral pumps. The funeral yeah. pumps. Uh, well, you know the phrase in Spain, pompas funebres. The funeral pumps have uh, has a kind of fascination. I like shadow. I like darkness. I like. Uh, I, I like. Uh, I like passing a summer afternoon in a graveyard. <laughs> and, and, uh, and but then interesting yeah, the skulls I can recall seeing a show in uh, Douglas Hyde uh, which I mean that was a work, kind of body work was that am I correct in saying that but the skulls are in one or one or two of the paintings are shaped like mountains which are in a sense for us mortals commune with the gods with feet of clay if you like yeah. And then stumble and to build a mountain out of skulls. That was, you know, it's, it's a kind of profound idea, isn't it? This kind of affirmation. I suppose, I suppose also, Joe, you know, when you're talking about things that we don't really know what they are, I think they are more fascinating for me than things that we, we know all about. And you can get all the information you like when you. To turn on the internet, you know, you can get you know, the whole world of information keeps coming in endlessly. But the things we don't know about, in other words, we, after we die and so on, like that, that no one talks about, or uh, because uh, these are the really, for me, especially I suppose at my age, uh, these are the really interesting things. And uh, uh, so, uh, it's, I, 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 I suppose I, I've always what, had a, a tendency to, 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 to work out a relationship with those, those unpronounceable, those uh, in, in, uh, uh, it, things we, we really don't know anything about, you know, and uh, and the things we can't categorize, or we can't uh, intellectualize, because we're, we every every attempt we make is is is, is based on the time that we inhabit and the space that we inhabit. But we, we're, we're, we're contemplating a world which has no time and no space. And that is really where you 
you know, you, you, you fall back on your imagination as the very best. And, and but this is a huge element of the unknown, and there's a huge element of unknowing also. And that's very interesting in the way you, the way you approach your work, that notion of the unknowing. It's a, a very enlightening um, proposition for one to hear and liberating. It's incredible. Man. Thank you very much for your, Thanks, Joe. For your words. How are we doing? I've no idea what time we're at or whether I'm driving people are trying to escape or what they're at. Uh, I, 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 have we got you trapped in here in a sea of questions about nothing? <laughs> I, I think we have to... I, 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 I think we... Have you we, had enough? We draw it to okay. close. Well, is there one more question? No. Yes, no. One. We're, we need to finish it off with something. Uh, thanks very much to, um, to both of you. Thanks so much for the conversation and also for the, the, the stunning exhibition, which actually features one of my uh, favorite works by you, Pat. Um, uh, Angels Ascending and Descending with Heavenly Spectators. Um, so I wanted to ask you, uh, do the angels walk amongst us? And if so, how do you know if you've met one? What's the question? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's another tough one, Pat. Uh, Joanne was complimenting the, the painting. Funnily enough, that painting, although it's in the show, is not in the show. It's, the model, the, it's in the model collection. And... When I'd written the text, I'd sort of hung the text around uh, Rilke's talking about angels and beginnings. So if you read the blurby bit, and then I realised, God, I've got no paintings of angels and no specific ones. So I said to Ema, "Could we hang that in the little chapel room?" So, yeah. But the the question was, I'd forgotten too. But uh, do angels are they? Do you meet them? Are they among us? What's, yeah, are angels what? Uh, do you meet them? Are they among us? What's the story with angels? Angels is a form of energy. Yeah. And energy is endless. And it's all around. Yeah, we, 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 we use... This is why um, angels have got a bad press. <laughs> and uh, and uh, just the same as uh, religion. That's a bad place because it's a, because all this all of the millennia uh, it was it was expressed in language which needs interpretation and people don't like interpreting. That's one of the discoveries I've made in my life that human beings are not really all that curious. <laughs> You know, other than the weather and uh, so on, people, people are, uh, curiosity is not something that, that exercises uh, too many people. And, uh, and we, anyway, we, 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 to make things simple and um, the valid currency in a way, we use words like angel and we use the word God all the time, but we don't know what it means, really. We all have theories and ideas about what it means, but uh, we, we really do, don't know. And that's what makes it interesting. God, you know, someone said, we, we, we don't, we can't look for God, or we can't find God. God finds us, and that's it. Well, I think you can't say anything better in this world than angels are energy. Uh, yeah. Probably nothing truer. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just energy. is a way of... You, if you, if you, you, you visualise energy in different forms, depending on your own intellectual or emotional, get, get, say, so on, 
you know, we, these are words, but you have to remember, angel is a word, and therefore it's, it's, it's only a part of what, you, what the reality is, or it's only an attempt at describing something which is indescribable. And to always remember we're using words which are at best in the approximation to reality. But it's not, words are not about real things, you know. Uh, with, with the, with the, but they, they, they pass for reality for the time being. Uh, just, 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 uh, I think on that note, that's a, a fine way to draw this to conclusion. That I'd like to really uh, on thank Pat for my time with him and working time, the things I learn, the things that it brings to my own practice is endless. Uh, so I really thank you all for uh, sitting with this for the whole, for it must be, I have no idea of the time, but it was certainly not easy in the beginning. It didn't flow naturally, but hopefully it got better as the conversation went on and, and you got involved. Um, so uh, I'm delighted we got to do it and I'm delighted we got to do the show and I'm delighted you're all here and I really appreciate you giving up your afternoon to come and take part in this. So uh, thank you.